Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with Maybill. Uh, last time we looked at the spectrum analyzer with the uh, noise bridge. This time we're going to make use of a built-in facility uh, in the spectrum analyzer that uh, I use, uh, and that's the tracking generator. So without further ado, let's go to the bench and start playing about. Okay, so here we are back again with the spectrum analyzer, and I've got it attached to the RF demo kit. Uh, come back to um, what I'm going to do with that in a moment. Last time we used the RF noise bridge to provide us with a broadband RF signal that we could feed through the filters on the board and then we could view the, the output um, on the trace on, on the tra on the display here. Um, now a lot of spectrum analyzers have what's called a tracking generator as does this one and a tracking generator sounds a bit fancy but in reality it's a signal generator and the signal that it produces sweeps um, in synchro with the scan of the analyzer and you can maybe see on here there is it's it probably can't see the red dot but there is a this is sweeping across as it scans just over two gigahertz of, of band here so um what we're going to do is we'll just look at the we'll turn the tracking we we'll go to the tracking generator menu here and i'm going to switch the tracking generator on so if you watch the trace as i do that now and now we've got a signal if you like and although this is actually connected on the through connection here so it output is connected directly to input even so we haven't got an exactly straight line and now the analyzer does give you a, an option to do something about that so if we select store and then select normalize it will draw a straight line but what it's done here is actually it's corrected for any uh, imbalance in output so any measurements we do later will be um, have that correction applied to them now at the moment we've got a massive sweep here which we don't actually need um, I'm going to have a look at just a couple of filters on here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frequency and I'm going to set up a start frequency of 5 megahertz and a stop frequency of uh, 12 megahertz and so we've now got um, 5 to 12 um, and we so we've zoomed in if you like so the line isn't exactly straight so if we go back to the tracking generator again and click on the normalize we can actually straighten up the trace so we're now we're ready to go but a point I want to make is that what I've got here I've got output of the tracking generator connected to input of the spectrum analyzer and by using the through connection on here I've actually allowed for anything which might be occurring in these two little fly leads as well so I've minimized um, the error if you like it I suppose another way to say it is I've actually included these these cables uh, in the calibration so now what we'll do is we'll get them connected up to one of the filters and then we'll uh, look at the kind of response we get okay so I've got um, tracking generator into one side and input onto the other I've got the band stop filter six and a half megs there so that's all connected up uh, I've not I've turned off the tracking generator but I've not um, uh, turned off the machine so the normalizing I did to the trace is still valid now you might recall last time when we turned on um, the, the noise bridge we had a quite a confused trace uh, and we had to use the average function to uh, to sort out uh, that random noise and actually produce a um, if you like a more uh, meaningful trace so here's a just a quickly go to a little bit of a, a video of that so that's the that's the trace and that's the uh, action of the um, averaging bringing down the noise into a to a more meaningful trace so that's what we did when we had the noise generator okay so back to uh, the tracking generator now so I've now got the um, filter connected up as I've said so we'll go to back to tracking generator and we'll turn the tracking tracking generator on and instantly we've got that filter response as you can see uh, that's a very different uh, 
kind of thing to um, what we saw when we were using the noise bridge so clearly it's a very handy piece of kit is the tracking generator so if we now uh, go back to um, well we go to span actually and uh, sorry we'll go to frequency what am I talking about here and we'll make the start frequency uh, 6 megahertz and we'll make the stop frequency 7 megahertz and so we've now put the, the filter into the middle there uh, but we've still got a similar issue to what we had going on yesterday where yeah we can see it but uh, if we want to really look at the shape of the filter we probably need to do a little bit more so I'm going to go to amplitude and I'm going to change the scale per division from 10 now one of the effects of that is it's going to move the trace down so I'm going to go down to to 5 in fact I'm going to go a little bit more I'm going to go to 4 but then I'm going to move the reference level back up like so and I'll go back on to scale per division again now and so we can turn I've gone to 2 dB per division now so I'll just move the reference level back up and now we can start uh, making some measurements should we so desire on that that filter and you can see it does um, very rapidly start to to tail away now bear in mind this is 2 dB uh, per division so if that's if we're going to assume that that there is about minus 38 uh, dBm is about um, if you like is about the nominal level um, so one and a half divisions down from there is as half the signal so that's the 3 dB down point so you can see yep yeah, this this filter does indeed um, fairly quickly uh, uh, allow uh, that range of frequencies through so that's the band stop filter on six and a half megs using the tracking generator you know compared to the trace we got yesterday here's a reminder of it it's totally different and, and, and a great deal uh, easier so what I'll do now I'll go back to um, to frequency again and we'll make the stop frequency uh, 11 uh, megahertz which should move that across to there and what I'm going to do now I'll do it while we're um, while I'll leave the video running Th these connectors are a little fiddly so I'm going to perhaps have a bit of a, a fight to attach them but um, hopefully it won't be too painful to watch um, they're very small connectors and probably never meant for repeated connections oh I managed to get it on there we go so trace has now vanished and that's because we've got a band pass filter now rather than a band stop filter so what we need to do is we need to go back to amplitude need to find the reference level so I'm just uh, hopefully going to get it to appear in a minute somewhere uh, as you can see I'm struggling so I'm going to go to um, going to go up to 10 dB per division there uh, right let's just make sure we've got tracking generator is on yes says it's connected uh, I think we might have a slight there we go slightly dodgy connection going on there that's probably um, a bit better right one of the problems here is I thought I'd set the start to um, a little bit higher but I hadn't so I'm going to change on on frequency I'm going to change start frequency to 10 megahertz there you go that's hopefully a little bit better and we'll make um, we'll make the stop frequency 11.5 megahertz so we can hopefully now see the shape of the filter so you can hope hopefully if I go again if I now go back to uh, to amplitude um, I'm back to, to 10 uh, dB per division here and because this is um, uh, a band pass filter um, there's, it's obviously letting a fair chunk of the energy through here and it's attenuating it down there so it's the opposite to the previous one which is one of the reasons the scale vanished but it, hopefully what you've seen there is it can be quite disconcerting because suddenly you, you can't find the trace so a handy thing I've found to use is to go back to um, to scale per division and to pick a scale that um, allows you to see so at 20 dB per division you can still see the shape of the filter there but if I 
now go down to before I was at 2 dB per division like there you can see the very the very top of it and if I now move that reference level up it's a, it's it's going to simply be um, too big to uh, actually view it all on the screen uh, but hopefully um, you're getting the idea so we'll just go back to something slightly more meaningful we'll go back to um, to 10 and we'll bring the display back down there now if you want to have a good look at these corners we can still use the, the feature that we used yesterday which is to go to trace and is to pick average of 100 and as it averages away there it's just done 15 sweeps now um, slowly but surely you start to get a, a display that gives you a, an easier to view idea of what's going on at the uh, on the skirts of the filter so there we go that's um, the tracking generator um, working uh, with a spectrum analyzer so if you've got a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator very nice um, if not as you saw on previous video you, you can use um, a different source but the handy bit here of course is that the signal generator is tracking um, the sweep so we're able to um, view very clearly the the shape of the filter and it may not be quite like that um, but to achieve that you could simply um, squeeze up the uh, display, uh, display a little bit okay well there you have spectrum analyzer uh, using the tracking generator to characterize a couple of uh, couple of the filters off that uh, RF board um, so I hope you've found that useful um, and I hope it's perhaps encouraged you if you've got a complex instrument that you're finding a bit baffling to just just get something simple like that RF board and just play about and practice with the settings um, because it's familiarity that will will give you the the skill to be able to use the machine when uh, you are less sure of what the results are likely to look like thanks very much for watching if you've liked the video please click uh, the like uh, please subscribe if you haven't already uh, both of those things cost you nothing just a little bit of effort i'd really appreciate that and we we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video